Hello and welcome to Brett Dupree's Awesome Health Journey. I'm of course Brett Dupree and today is another mental health, uh, more aspect of my journey. Basically on Tuesday of this, today's Thursday, so two days ago, I gave a speech at this place called the Lightworker Toastmasters. For people who don't know who I am, I used to be a member of the Lightworker Toastmasters. In fact, I was the founding member. It was an idea I had, and I followed through, and it was one of the most amazing experiences of my life. And to not get too political, I decided to step away due to a few of the members' personal beliefs and not wanting to be a part of it, but because I created a club where anyone can talk about anything and feel comfortable and not set any boundaries, I didn't, I felt starting, trying to start now after like two years, this didn't make sense. And COVID also didn't help either. And so I stepped away and that was really hard on me. Very hard on me. Uh, losing something I really loved, but stepping into there, I have no, I've, I have no desire to actually go back to Toastmasters or Lightworker Toastmasters at this time. I'm open to maybe someday, but right now, I mean, I'm open to someday because I'm not a never say never type of person. I have no idea where I'll be a year from now in my mental mentality and stuff. I'm open to anything. But as of now, I have zero desire to do that. I mean, if someone wants me to speak and they're part of, you know, it's nice to see people I haven't seen in a while, of course. So it'll be more of like seeing old friends type of things if I ever go to a Toastmaster event. Or go if I visit Lightworkers again, I'll be like, oh, um, blah, 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 person is showing up again. It'll be nice to see them again type thing. It'll be more for the people. And if they want me to speak, I always enjoy speaking, especially at Lightworkers, because that was an amazing experience. And one reason why it was amazing is because I used to have this dream of being a motivational speaker and a life coach. It's why I have, as one of my coworkers who never actually met me, just heard my voice over Zoom, told me that I have like an aura of positivity. And I kind of have that. I have an aura. I kind of can exude some positivity and I can exude this safeness and, uh, because I worked on myself and I worked on that aspect of myself a lot. And because that was, as I viewed my purpose, my purpose in life, I wanted to live a purpose filled life. And that was very important to me. So one thing about the Lightworker Toastmasters is that I spent years trying to be a motivational speaker and a life coach and failing miserably. Like 11, 12 years of all it really did was just take money away from me and seeing little to no results in that other than people telling me that, you know, I'm a positive person and they like me. Um, but to actually find a way to make money off of it and live off it or make it so it wasn't a money sink and a time sink, even though I did enjoy it and I enjoyed the growth of it, was that part was hard. But I did like the fact that it made me feel purposeful in the sense where I was like, I have a justification for living in a sense. And so one part of my depression was losing that sense of purpose because Lightworker Toastmasters was the first thing I did which really solidified the fact that I had the ability to do that. I built a group of people who did pay, even though it was cheap, because Toastmasters is dollar for dollar the best personal growth thing out there. It's not that pricey. And I know, so I'm not saying if you can't afford it that there's anything wrong with you, no. But just like, it, it's not like a $5,000 weekend, which I have uh, paid for or seen out there, you're right? You know. So basically, it's like $70 a year or $100 a year. So it's relatively cheap. Uh, but basically, <clears throat> what I was saying is I built this club from just myself into th four months later chartering. And that is very difficult for the people who've tried to start Toastmasters clubs to be able to do it that quickly. And then a year later, the membership doubled. And that's with attrition. There's a lot of attrition. People move. People have different times. So we're losing 
members every month, but gaining more members every month. It was a great club full of love, and it just proved to myself that I can do this because a lot of people who were part of that club really thanked me for getting them to do it, thanked me for how much I've helped them grow, and I got a lot of praise and a lot of uh, just, you know, a lot of kudos, and I still do from the older members and stuff, the people who were part of it, of what I accomplished and how I helped them. And that just proved to me that I could do it, and then I lost it. And then I decided I didn't want to be a motivational speaker, life coach, in the sense that I was before. I don't know what's going to happen in my future. I'm open to anything. But right now, no, I'm just focusing on myself. Uh, but that aspect of myself, losing that, was difficult. It was hard. It really helped me become depressed. And because I put so much focus on living my purpose, being of service, uh, justifying my existence on this planet, that when I lost that, I kind of lost what I wanted to do. It took so much time out of my day, out of my week, out of my month, and all of a sudden, all of that was gone. It gave me so much love, so much fulfillment, so much reason to get up in the morning and to do things. All of a sudden, all that is gone. And honestly, it gave me so much love going to every meeting and so many hugs and so many amazing praise and ego just... And all of a sudden, all of that was gone. And so one thing I had to determine in this year and a half or so, two years of working with therapists, and uh, which, you know, this year, like February, March, that time I kind of felt like not depressed anymore or at least on the verge of not being super sad all the time, was the fact that, like, I had to find a way to be okay with just existing without purpose, without a reason to be. I mean, it was kind of different uh, soon after because I also had a relationship, and I was able to put s some of that into being with someone and being in a relationship and trying to build that, but then that became gone as well. And so really, especially so last September through December and January was a lot of soul searching of like, what do I fucking do with my life? Why do I, why do I get up every morning? What is the point? Just go to work and sleep and play video games? Like why? And just thinking about it, it wasn't that different. That's when I came up with the idea of maximum enjoyment. Um, you know, trying my best just to live my best life. Because, like, why do I even need to justify my existence? Why do, why do I even need a purpose? Who fucking told me that? Who said, like, on high that I needed a reason to be to be, right? You know, where did I get that idea? Why did I hold on to that idea? Even though I knew it was a wrong idea because it could lead to what it led to. Like, I mentally knew that. I told myself that. But once I lost it, I still had that. Because a lot of times in life I've learned that you can understand things mentally or even emotionally, you know, from reading books or going through it. And so that makes sense. But once it actually happens, you don't know how you're going to react. And... Just so thinking about that, and that's when I did come up with maximum enjoyment and think, you know, I'm going to dedicate more time to my mental health and my physical health. I mean, I'm not going to dedicate my life to that right now because, you know, I'm just at this point. <laughs> I mean, who would want a fitness influencer that looks like this? But, you know, right now I have no desire to be a fitness influencer or a fitness person or make fitness my life. But I do need to become healthy because I don't want to be... Let's say hypothetically, I live till I'm 80. If I work out, if I don't work out, I don't want to be 80 like this. I rather be, I rather die healthy than die fat. And I don't want to say fat and unhealthy. I know fat, healthy, except but just this uncomfortable. I want to be more comfortable. So I'm really just focusing on my health and uh, working on just feeling surrounding myself and doing things that I enjoy and just enjoying this gift of life, right? This thing that was thrust upon me that I had no choice about and I could be upset about it and think I need a purpose or a reason to live or I can just recognize the fact that I'm here. I might as well enjoy it. I might as well do my best to live my best life for the reason of why not, right? Why not? 
Like, I don't need a reason for being. I don't need a reason for living. I just need to live. I just need to be. For the sake of it. I mean, to be or not to be, that is the question. The suffer all, the slings and arrows, and that's, I think, all I need. I think I already messed up. But you know, you know what I'm trying to say. Basically, I just had to come to the conclusion that the purpose of life is to live. And yet, I do like to serve. There's, I mean, I enjoy service. I enjoy helping people. I enjoy making people's day brighter. And I try to make every interaction with myself to make people's day brighter because I enjoy that. That brings me joy. It doesn't. I don't feel obligated. I don't feel like I need it to uh, justify myself or I do it because of past drama. I do it because I like seeing people smile when they're around me and see them light up, even if it's the dentist, right? I tried to have a, went to the orthodontist yesterday. De- Dentistry is freaking expensive, but I try to like make that a positive uh, experience for them because why not? Because I have a more fun and that makes my life more enjoyable, right? And that's what I care about is my making my life as enjoyable as I can. And I've been talking longer on this one. I didn't realize this one was so long, so I apologize. But I guess what I'm just trying to say basically is... Uh, One positive aspect of my mental health has been recognizing the fact that I am valid just the way I am. I am worthy just the way I am. I am worthy just the way I am. And yeah, there's nothing wrong with being worthy. There's nothing wrong with wanting to improve your life situation and recognize I'm worthy. There's nothing wrong with thinking that I'm a great person. Yes, I need to work on my health. I'm not, there's nothing wrong thinking, yeah, I do assholey things. I've did assholey things in my past, but I am worthy of love. I am worthy of existence. I am worthy of being me. And basically speaking, it's okay if I don't have a big life purpose to make the world a better place. Uh, what matters is I just do the best that I can with what I have right now and that I enjoy my life. So I guess... I hope this helps you because I like being of service. It's one reason why I like videos better than journaling. I hate journaling because that's just for myself. But when I make these videos, I feel like I'm serving somebody. Even if it's just one person out there who resonates this with this message. It helps me process things. It helps me, it helps me process. It helps me with my thoughts. It's like journaling, but it's, but also in a sense, maybe one person out there who's thinking their life is meaningless thinks, well, maybe, just maybe I'm worth it. Maybe, just maybe I'm worthy. And that's why this video exists. Because I love you for who you are, and you are worthy. Have an amazing day. And thank you for listening.